Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Hannah, editing me, coming in at the start of this video to tell you that this is part two of my cult book, everything I know about cults, recommendations video. So this will include all the non-fiction books I'm yet to read that I'm really excited about and TV and podcast documentary recommendations for you all to listen to. So I hope you enjoy this and I will see you um, again soon. Bye. Um, okay, let's move on to non-fiction books that are on my TBR. The first one is written by Anna Wallace Johnson's favourite guy, John Krakow. I'm guessing that's the same John Krakow. Yeah, it says he has a literary reputation. Under the Banner of Heaven, a story of violent faith. So this is about messianic delusion, polygamy and unyielding faith. So this looks at... He moves his focus from physical adventure to extreme religious belief. This is um, about a Mormon fundamentalist group following a murder that two of the heads committed, Ron and Dan Laferry, who believe they got a revelation from God and it told them to kill these people, so they did it. Um, a divinely inspired crime, it's described as. Um, so this is researched by Krakow. He goes and follows different isolated Mormon fundamentalist communities, which I think is really interesting. So it says it follows the 40,000 Mormon fundamentalists who believe that the Mormon church unforgivably strayed away from renounce, when they renounced polygamy. It looks at Salt Lake City, Mexico, Canada, um, and weaving the story of the brothers along with a clear-eyed look at Mormon's violent, Mormonism's violent past. I know Mormonism is like a contentious um, topic to consider a cult but definitely like fundamentalist polygamy Mormon I think is defined as one so it says it looks at a distinctly American brand of religious extremism it came out in 2003 I can't believe I've missed this one it's got 3.98 and 175,000 reviews so that one is definitely on the list um, the next one which I have not heard people talk about and I believe it's set in South Africa Potentially I made that up. It might be set in America. So it's called The World in Flames and the subline is A Black Boyhood in a White Supremacy Doomsday Cult. So this is in 1970, um, a member of the church whose beliefs he finds not only confusing but terrifying. The cult believed in the Great Tribulation, which is like a common thread you read about and the idea that like there's a new world that will begin and all the good people will be saved um, as per doomsday rhetoric. So they said they joined the church in Chicago, his parents joined the church when they were living in a Chicago housing project in 1960s. They were the, with the, the first four of their seven children and most significantly both his parents were blind, losing their sight in childhood accidents and they took comfort in the belief that they could they have been chosen for a special afterlife. Wow, that sounds, were they, that is, that is very interesting on like predatory behaviour and indoctrination of vulnerable people so it says they joined the armstrong church and dutifully sent their tithes um the church which made 80 million dollars every year in revenue and a hundred had a hundred thousand members okay i have to read this one um it's been on my so it's not set in south africa i made that bit up um <laughs> there must be another one that is definitely on my to read list because that um disability context sounds wild and then one that my boyfriend tom has read but i haven't read is underground by haru by murakami and i don't read a lot of murakami anymore i don't enjoy his books that much but my the, my favorite book by him is what we talk what i mean when i talk about running his running memoir um i love his non-fiction a lot i don't care for his fiction writing but tom read this and it's about a cult in Tokyo which I think is really interesting so the subline is the Tokyo gas attack and the Japanese psyche so it's about a terrorist attack that occurred in the late 90s in Japan on a like subway train um that used the point that used sarin a uh, poison gas 26 times more deadly than cyanide so <sighs> Murakami talks to the people who lived through the catastrophe a subway employee a survive with survivor guilt a fashion salesman and a young cult member who contem condemns the attack, though he has not quit Om. Om are the group with these and many other voices exposing the intriguing aspects of Japanese psyche. He discerns the fundamental issues that led to the attack and 
within that we see a clear vision as to how this could occur at any time or any place. So I think this is really interesting, a journalistic literary view. And um, the fact it's focused in Japan, like I said, we obviously can get like white Western context when we're talking about cults. So this is one I definitely want to get to. And I'm sure there might be a couple of others written about this context as well. Moving on to the final segment of this book, well, there's two segments to go, but they're both quite short. Podcasts and then TV documentaries I've watched. So in terms of podcasts, my favourite podcast at the moment is Sounds Like a Cult, and that is um, an offshoot of Cultish by Amanda um, Montel, and it's her podcast she runs with her friend who's a comedian, they talk about things that are like cults but aren't cults. So they did one on like astrology, marathon running, MLMs like um, LuLaRoe, all those different kind of conversations about things that might be cults, sort of like continuation of her book where she talks about soul cycle and glossier and stuff so that's like cult adjacent i guess but i thought it was really funny and really led me to think about a lot of things that um have cult like behaviors attached to them um even things like i'm involved in environmentalism veganism like this um, militancy that we see in the way that we do selfhood um i think that's really interesting so i love that and then one that's like super culty and so comprehensive there's so many episodes and that's trust me um and the byline is cults extreme beliefs and abuse of power so both um of the presenters grew up in different cult groups I forget what one of them is called like something hands which i'd never heard about and then i think the other person grew up in the children of god and they interview mostly survivors of people who have lived through um and grew up in or had family members as part of groups there's yeah like everyone children of god this seven hands one um fundamentalism fundamental mormonism doomsdays like ev everything there's so many episodes most of them are like two parts long um and they're really brilliant i think there's even one with one of the manson girls um that i really enjoyed um and then a second or third recommendation on the Nexicum situation is there's a podcast by um cbs called uncover and they did a series on Nexicum. so that is how sarah edmonton got her book which it's like really interesting the podcast it's like one of those brilliant um sort of like how did that happen situations where she was like just returned from leaving Nexicum and ended up um in her childhood family home and ran into a family friend who now turned out to be like a journalist and they ended up in having like these extremely long interviews and turning it into a podcast series so that's how i first read about nexicum and i think the series is really good and then another couple that i'm only just starting to get into is um cult vault which is like a, quite a funny um more surface level superficial look at different cult groups but it does not do that like annoying true crime thing of pretending that they're all for entertainment which really pisses me off i think they have enough gravitas for time what they're talking about to make it worthwhile listening to but i've only listened to like three or four episodes so far this is um also my last recommendation is kind of like cult adjacent but it's something i've been thinking about a lot recently and it's called scott con spirituality i read a really good article about sort of how um a yoga community i think it was in australia had turned its back on covid science and how there's like this really big crossover of like people involved in spiritual movements who um turn out to be anti-vax so this podcast series um, describes itself as a weekly study in the convergent right-wing conspiracy theorists and faux progressive wellness utopian. At best, the conspirituality movement attacks public health efforts in a time of crisis, and at worst, it fronts and recruits the, for the fever dream of QAnon. So QAnon is like a conspiracy slash cult group, I would say. Um, it looks at the alt-right, the blur of disinformation, discourse and good intentions with charismatic influences exploiting their followers to co-opt conspiracy theories that range from vaccines to child trafficking so i listened to one last week called a field guide to white supremacy and there's a really good one called the society of the conspiracy which looks at like why conspiracy theories thrive um so i guess this, i guess these are cult adjacent but i feel like if you like this kind of stuff you would also enjoy this um Okay, and the last set of recommendations are for documentaries. I feel like most of these are very well watched, but in case you haven't seen them or if you live in a different country, you might find this interesting. So BBC, um, which is like a UK broadcaster, I'm sure you could find other ways of watching it if you're not in the UK, did a, I think it's like a six part or three part, um, like docudrama series on Jonestown. Like it has a lot of um, 
reconstructing scenes, particularly in Guyana, which are like obviously harrowing, but really interesting to watch, like high production, really good quality. And then on Netflix, you've got Wild Wild Country, which is the cult that I mentioned in reference to Burnt Sugar by um, Avina Doshi. And that is about a group in India with a leader. It's about free love, sex, spiritualism, and then they end up similar to Jonestown, sort of like opposite way around, they um, uproot to this small town called Antelope in Oregon and take over this town and end up bussing loads of these vulnerable homeless people in to build this utopia. Um, and yeah, it's a wild documentary series if you haven't seen it. And then oh, also on Netflix, um, similar is Bikram, which is about um, Bikram yoga, which put my hands up I'm, I'm a recovering Bikram yoga person in my youth I loved Bikram um it's about yeah sexual abuse and high control in that particular yoga movement um and interviews a lot of people who were a part of it at the time um and then there is a vice documentary called the Moonies so the Moonies is a really interesting cult about um I think they're end of the world beliefs, but it's they yeah they're most famous for their mass marriages that happen in stadiums that you will have seen pictures of, of like people meeting their their um, future partner for the first time like as they're walking down the aisle with like five thousand other brides and grooms. Um, there's a good documentary on that one, and then there's a Netflix documentary on the Children of God that's really old, but I feel like is still worth watching. Um, it follows a couple of families. I think they're American and British, and talks about yeah different practices in the children of god and then sort of like the division of family when some people choose to leave and some don't it, it's really emotionally harrowing but a good watch um and then a couple that two that's on my list um with tom is wacko rules of engagement so the wacko group are so there's the original film which was in 1997 called wacko rules of engagement i haven't seen that one but the newest um i think it was originally hbo but now it's on um netflix is called Wacko, Madman or Messiah and it's again one of those like high production dramatised versions so it says it's told by survivors including news clips, audios and recordings of David Koresh it tells the story of the Wacko Massacre so the Wacko Massacre Wacko is an area in Texas I believe yeah Axel Texas and um, this is like about an FBI siege on the religious sect where um, David Koresh was the leader and um follows a sort of like starts at the siege and works its way back to yeah the people who survived and how they found their way in yet another doomsday group okay and then a cult that i mentioned earlier in a couple of books but i have never actually read a full-length book on is heaven's gate so they are like the ufo cult they believe in like um uh, mass suicide they were like a big proponent of that when it happened and they had the um, the largest mass suicide in US history, I believe, of like 21 people um, in Oregon. And they believed, um, yeah, in the existence, the existence of UFOs and the idea that like, if they took their own life, it would be with everyone else up in the universe. So that is a four part documentary series, again, HBO. So I have not seen that yet. And it includes, I think, voices of a family members I don't know about survivors there is a again like a tv series on the Manson family I haven't watched it it's called Manson the women and it's about particularly like the girls in the group and um the the tape murders and how they like indoctrinated to believe in committing a crime so that sounds really good although I have not seen it well, the cult things I've ever watched, read or listened to that I recommend for other people to watch, read or listen. Let me know if you have any recommendations down below. As I said, I am not the occult leader on cults, so I do not have all of it for you, but I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was informative. I hope this will fill your cult hole in your life that you need to um, consume content about. And thank you so much. If you're new here, please subscribe. I make content about books, disability, other stuff that I find interesting um, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!